All righty. So welcome back from the break. Uh, today, uh, my co-translator, I don't know another word for it. Yuya? Yeah, Yuya, he is actually teaching a class right now. So we changed the time. So unfortunately, he'll be a little bit late, but he's like, maybe I can make it at the end and come in and answer questions if anyone has questions um, for a native Japanese speaker on how the translating of the look I can talk goes. But today I will be with Craig and um, I'm just gonna talk about the Japanese version of look I can talk, which is TPRS's curriculum for um, TPRS. <laughs> and uh, Yuya and I have been working on this with Craig. Craig has been helping us every step of the way, helping with uh, making us better teachers and also um, asking really good questions to make sure that the Japanese is authentic, that there's really good culture, um, helping us to make the Japanese version not just a translated uh, version of the Spanish but actually Japanese language. So uh, it's all a work in progress. We are all still learning. So if you um, do use this product and you have any suggestions or edits, please don't hesitate to reach out to Craig and let him know. And then he'll reach out to me and Yuya and then we'll talk about it and we'll see if we wanna make that change. But which is really why, which yeah. is why digital version is cool because we can fix exactly. it almost immediately rather than a printed and having to wait to the next print. Yeah. And another cool thing is everything's editable. So if you're like, I'm not using that word or maybe like the sore tomo, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to, you can change anything you want. So let's do a quick intro and then Craig will guide us through um, how to access the TPRS portal and use it and all of that. If you have any questions, Go ahead and type it in the chat. Craig, do you mind if people just unmute and ask in the middle? That's kind of our I, I don't style, mind if right? they just raise their hand like this so we sure. can see them. Yep. Yep, perfect. Um, you can also use your little reaction button to raise your hand, your participants oh. button. Alrighty. So uh, here we are. Oops. And here are here's the agenda. <laughs> Some of the things we'll go through. And uh I feel like this is probably every one of us. TPRS is hands down my favorite method for acquiring new languages, but where are our resources as Japanese teachers? So says every Japanese teacher everywhere in the world. Raise your hand if you can relate, <laughs> right? That's the whole reason that I'm doing this. I was in a training and I was like, can I just have access to make the Japanese one? And they're like, sure, but it's a lot of work. And I was like, that's okay, I'll just try. So like, and is it a lot of work, Missy? <laughs> yes, it is. She yeah. works on it every Sales week. Pacing, yeah. It's been tough with COVID because, you know, workload has shifted a bit. It's really fun. So if anyone wants to help, you can always help us too. All right, so let's get into it a little bit. So very short introduction. I am Missy Arushidani. My real name is Melissa. I have been teaching English since... 2003, I taught 11 years in Japan. And then since 2015, I've been in the US teaching. Uh, we call it ELL in the US. I think you guys call it English Additional Language in Australia. I don't know what Canada calls it, but uh, teaching students whose uh, home language isn't English. English. And then also I'm teaching Japanese. And then Yuya, he has been teaching English. Um, in Japan and Canada since 2011. And he and I used to work together at Kindai in uh, Toyoka in Hyogo Prefecture. That's how we met. And then I don't even remember how we got into contact again. And then I was like, let's, you can help me. I need a native speaker. So that's why we're co-translating mm -hmm. this together. So most important thing, Japanese resources exist and we're making more and more. So thank you. <laughs> what is she? Best thing ever. I've been Ski. waiting for this. Ski. <laughs> Ski. Yeah, I've been waiting for this for a long time. I'm sure you guys have. Um, so there is the portal. Has anyone ever heard of the portal? We got some thumbs up. So no, it's interesting. Okay, so Craig is gonna walk us through. Let me just 
see. Yeah, so he'll talk about all of the resources that are in the portal and what will soon be put into the portal as it's created. And then um, I'll talk a little bit about the slides as he gets into the portal and explain what is the thinking that goes behind how we created the slides the way that we created them. And then we'll go through a little sample scope and sequence if you guys are interested. And uh, yeah, we can talk about workshops and all of that, but let's go into the portal first. So Craig, I'm gonna stop sharing if you are ready to share the portal and how to walk through it. Did someone have a question just now? Did I hear someone? Nope, maybe not. Okay, if you do have a question, go ahead and ask. All right, go for it. Okay, can, can you see my screen? Okay, well, I just want to say that um, this is, we're, we're grateful for COVID. Uh, <laughs> as bad as that sounds, um, this, we have been able to expand worldwide. We've had people from all over the world now able to come to a workshop because before we didn't know much about Zoom and nobody else knew how to do Zoom, but now everybody knows how to do Zoom and Google Meets and all that. But it also forced us to put it online and so now people all over the world can do it. Hey guys, hey guys, hey. Okay, sorry. And so um, if you're at our, so the other thing I wanna show is when we get into the slides, there used to, if you did TPRS, I don't know, three years ago, if you went to a training three years ago or longer, you probably heard of Ask a Story. And so that's hard. I don't know if anybody can relate. And I think Sine was going to say too, like, ask a story is hard. You just give me three phrases and I have to come up with a story. Oh my gosh. Well, as a trainer, I, I see this all the time. And so we've, we kind of moved in a little, we, we kind of developed training wheels. And we've, that was the intent is to develop training wheels. But what happened was even the pros liked to do it. Because even the pros get tired, like trying to come up when an impromptu and, 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 you know, improv, that's hard stuff. So we, we think we have a brilliant idea. We have tested it twi or four times now, and we're getting amazing results. So this is what we're going to show you. Uh, and, and these are the resources that we are actually using and getting the results. So that's my intro to this. If you're at our main page. We now have three websites that are not linked together other than these two buttons. So watch out because like, hey, I don't see it. Well, if you're on our main page, you can go and click on this blue button that says the teacher portal. And the teacher portal means it's just for teachers. This is a bank of resources made just for teachers. So at this TPRS portal, there are these are all the languages we're working on. We're working on, do, before it was just Spanish and French, a little bit of German. And now we're we want to get everybody involved because we don't have printing costs with this. Printing costs, not selling a bunch of printed materials is the biggest hindrance, but now we don't have to worry about it. So we're trying to develop as much as we can. And, and if you're also, again, I, I don't think Missy said it loud enough. If you're interested in helping, um, we, we won't refuse you. <laughs> so it, there's a Japanese sample here and a sample does one full lesson. And then we have another version called the promo, the promotional. That's one full chapter, which is three lessons. And then we have what's called the basic, which is the whole thing, uh, all of the resources, uh, and then there will be eventually, when we get this one done, we'll do the premium version. The goal of the premium version is to have 10 different ways to teach every single lesson. So you can do it with some type of story. A picture talk is a story, a movie talk, an event talk, a culture talk, a tattoo talk, a scar talk, whatever turtle talk you want. We'll, we will continue to add those to the premium version so there's always variety. So, but the, but the basic version is everything of the basics. And that's included in the sample version, the, the Japanese sample, which is free. You can give this a try 
and say, and give us your feedback and say, I'm not buying it until you do this. Well, fine, <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out what you need and, and we'll put it on there. So what do you get? These are all tabs. So we have a teacher's guide, slides, student text, stuff for the students to read. TPRS is teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling, assessment, culture, and I think we include one movie talk in the basic. It'll be in the, the whole, all of them will be in the premium once we get those done. Okay, I hope that you noticed on those, those five, six things, I hope you noticed that it's everything you need. Like you can literally go in two minutes before class, click, click and be teaching instead of having all the prep and all the PowerPoints that you have to make and all that stuff that you cut things out, all that stuff that you guys do for hours and hours and hours. It's all, it's all ready for you to teach a TPRS lesson. So the teacher's guide will be full of these sample scripts. If, so if you're not good, if you're like, I'm not sure exactly how to do this very well, help me, here's a script. Missy made a script, goes slide by slide, what to ask, and then you just repeat those questions until you get the feel of it. TPS is a done a lot by feel and, and practice, but this will get you started. So this teacher's guide is going to be there for you. Oh, and then right here, we give you kind of a possible sequence. Each lesson should take, could, should take a minimum of 15 to 30 hours. So it takes a while and, and don't rush it. If it takes longer than 30 hours, I think in our Chinese class, Jing, is Jing still here? I don't, yeah, Jing's still here. I think we're on day 30 something, 35, and we're still on the very first story. And we're about two thirds of the way done <laughs> the first story. It, is, it doesn't matter how fast you go. It's how fast are the students going and they're picking it up. Okay. Um, and also, it, anyways, also we have like a lesson cycle. What does that look like? So no, notice it's no longer called an ask a story. It's called an interact a story because we're, the goal is to interact. That is the whole point. And so when we get to the slides, the whole purpose of the slides, we gave you some options here. Do you want it just in Romaji and past tense? We have that slideshow. We have the same slideshow in Romaji present. We have the same slideshow in Kana Kanji past and kana kanji present. And then we're going to add these uh, cold character reading slides so that you can do those, add those in there if that's something you want to do. Remember, this is your portal. The students don't see this. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. We're trying to provide options. And then finally, there's a second story that goes along with this. So there are two actual different stories that we're going to ask in class, that we're going to interact with in class. Let's look at the, let's look at, which one should we look at? What would be most helpful you think, Missy? Let's have some tickets that has the um, full grammar. Kind of kanji? Yes. Okay. I'm right. picking the right one. <laughs> yeah, let's hope it's the right if one. If not, then you have to go back, but let's see. Is nope, that the right one? Right. Nope. Okay, let's go to the um, Romaji. Um, present. Present, yeah. I know for sure that's right. Yeah, we were. She's to, but. <laughs> she's redone them, and well, and like because because of some, <laughs> like right. We keep saying, well, it's probably better if you do this, and she's like, oh, okay, we'll go back no, and no, redo no, it it's all again. So fun, and it's so good. And like recently, I went to a CCR training. Well, it was just CI and CCR training by Terry Walt, and I got her um, after her training. I was like, oh. Oh, we should do this now and then i'm in a chinese class and i see they're using colors for tones and then i was like oh we could use colors for different parts and then craig was like well how about uh, the whole entire thing is color coordinated and then as the words are reintroduced a second time they become black because it's supposed to be a known word and just go through that and it's just it's brilliant like everything in here is so good and it's not because i created it's because i'm like big borrowing and stealing that's an american teacher thing i don't know if you guys have it in australia yeah, yeah we say big borrow and steal but yeah yep. i'm just trying to get as many ideas from as many people as possible will has helped a lot too he's done one of the um second stories and i mean it's 
awesome what he's created. So yeah, I'm just stealing ideas from everyone. Andrew's given me a lot of feedback when he comes and observes classes. Um, okay, so yeah, let's do awesome. this. So what, should, what we've put in here is some stuff that you can pre-teach if you're the pre-teaching kind. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a pre-teaching kind. I'm like, let's jump into the sentence and just start talking. But some, some people like to pre-teach it or maybe do some actions with it or something. We gave you that option right here at the beginning. Or you can just start right here. And so this can come first. And so this was one of the things we saw. Somebody said, what if you did this? Otoko no ko ka imas. Oh, and you're supposed to say, oh. Grasu. <laughs> you, you say something else. I don't remember yeah, what it that's is. Right, that's right. So, yeah, we start out and you just see the script. And it's all the like normal Japanese script. The idea behind this was that if a student were to go to Japan right away tomorrow, we want them to be able to read what they see. Like if they go to the supermarket, if they have a newspaper, if they're in school, we want the most natural text possible, but you can change it. If you're like, no way, my kids are doing only here, God, no problem. You can edit it. It's a quick fix. Uh, you just go in, type it however you want it. You could make a copy, fix it however you want, and keep That's one right. for one level, another one for a different level. Whatever you right want there. to do, sky's the limit. But yeah, will you go back to what you were just doing? Yeah, so as long as you have a subscription in force, you can make a copy and edit. Once yeah. that subscription's gone, though, we ask you to delete it, right? Because that's, you don't have to subscribe, right? Yes. Resubscribe and then maintain. That's right. There you go. <laughs> so, okay, the so that, yeah, keep going. Is you just, you read it, you can ask your questions, and then if you can click, then the Romaji comes up. So, this is the Romaji slide because there's Romaji on top, but there's also the Hiragana um, Katakana version too, where the Furigana will come up. And then you'll say it. And then if you notice on the bottom, it's color coordinated for a meaning translation. So, otoko no ko ga imasu means there's a boy. But if Craig clicks one more time, you'll see that um, boy exists. So, the literal translation pops up. So, this was a request by some students. They said, oh, we don't want just what it means. We want to know like what each word means. It's too confusing because the order is all out of whack. We did this at a TPRS strong, like a coaching program. And we got a lot of feedback. So some people were like, no, I want the meaning. No, I want the literal translation. So we were like, let's just do both. So there's you both. You could decide what you want. You could go delete yeah, something if you don't want it. Right. If you don't like it, delete it. If you love it, keep them both. I use both because my students, I ask them everything I'm like, do you like this? Is this helpful? And so they're used to answering my questions, but I have gotten both, so I have both. And then if you click again, um, something recently people said is they want to know what the particles mean. So there's these little tiny grammar pop-ups. Uh, I remember uh, Sanaya was just saying like, sometimes subject marker doesn't mean anything. So you can use your gestures, you can, do your five second grammar pop up for these, but just basic meaning of what these particles are is on here. And then if you click one more time. Um, so now when you get into your um, triangling. triangling and triangling, yeah, you can start using these words and then you can set the visual if they need it. If you don't want them to have it, you can just take it off or you can move it to the side and bring it back for the classes that you want. Um, and then for the present tense slides, we always use mas and masen because we want students to speak politely. But I think as we evolve, maybe we can start making a jishoke or um, maybe even keigo if we want. I mean, we can choose, we can do whatever we want. Um, but for right now, just basic, making sure that whenever they go to Japan, they are being as polite as possible. So. And, and you did this for the universal teacher, right? Yeah, right, right. It's for, yeah, the universal teacher stuff. And then, of course, you see that all of the uh, little boxes are in Romaji. And the reason is, is because as a non-native teacher, 
I'm learning something new. I don't want to have to look and try to read and remember what it is. Some teachers even add little kanji or like the hiragana or the katakana, whatever the word is, next to it, like as a third column, but I don't do it because I figure, I don't know, it's just me, but you can definitely add it. Um, all of these question words, I know like ikutsu, maybe it's not like the best question word for how many, but it's there. And if you want to change it, go for it. You can do whatever you want. Um, awesome. Yeah, let me think really quick. Um, I'm looking at my notes. Oh yeah, uh, another thing from Terry Waltz that I learned is that spacing is really important when you're teaching literacy. So she was saying like, we are teaching students how to read and we want to set them up to be as successful as possible. We don't have to shove all the words together and make it natural. We can spread them out and give them a chance to be successful. And then as they go and as they develop, they'll be able to read uh, the sentences with everything together. But if you don't like that, put them together. I have a coworker and she hates spaces and anything. So <laughs> she just puts them all together and that's totally fine. She doesn't like the colors. She has it all black and white. That's fine. It works for her. It works for her students. That's, that's great. Um, so let me think. What was I gonna say? There was one more thing. Oh yeah, another thing is, um, because Yuya and I are creating this together and me, I'm approaching this obviously with a non-native Japanese speaker perspective and uh, trying to think of the words and phrases that I used and heard or think that are really important for a foreigner to know when they go to Japan. And then he's approaching it from a native speaker's perspective and telling me like, oh, no, I don't think that sounds good. Or, oh, this, this is really awkward. We need to change that. So we have really good conversations um, and we try to do the best that we can. But of course, let us know if there's anything that you feel that we're missing or that you would like to have. Awesome. I love your humility with this, Missy. <laughs> it's, we're not saying that we're the experts, the pros that, that ha end all be all. We, we always accept input. So if you have it, let us know. Um, right. What I also love about this is the fact that it comes up a little at a time so that there's a lot of white space first. And so you get oriented to where things are and then things come up and you go, oh, okay. And then things come up because if you had all of this right from the beginning, sometimes it's overwhelming to the mind. So we had, we, we, they took all the time to put in all the annotations so that, or, or animations so that they would come up at different times. Awesome. Okay. And then we just go on to the next sentence and then, and it goes through the same way all the way through. You get down to, and you get down to the end. Okay. So those are the slides. Now, the difference between ask a story, ask a story is we'd give you three phrases or whatever, and then you'd have to come up. The cool thing about a story already being done is that in TPRS training now, we're teaching you how to jump off of the story, use the story as a skeleton, but then jump off of it and ask the class parallel characters, make it engaging and fun that way, rather than having this super marvelous beautiful perfect story i you know what i notice about perfect stories they don't want to play they want to see what's on the next slide they they just want like oh this is so good what's coming up and they won't stop and play so here this not that not to say this isn't an excuse of why we wrote boring stories but but the the fact that you can take any story and just jump off of it and do the parallel story and and play with it that's where your fun is Instead of cutting out all these fun games and stuff to try to make the fun, the fun is the story, the co-creating of the parallel characters. So that's why we call it an interactive story because too many people know what ask a story was. And this is not that ask a story any longer. This is, this is interacting within a skeleton story and we're trying to jump off to the side. Right, you can get... Uh-oh. <laughs> Is everyone still with me? Okay. All right. Coca Cola. Okay, sorry, say it again, Missy. Okay, sorry. Froze for a second. Sorry. 
Um, I was saying that um, the fun thing about this co-creating the stories or the interacting of the stories is that you can get weird things like my last PCR video on YouTube is about them going to Chicago for Coca-Cola toilet water and things like that. Yes. Yeah. It can be <laughs> wild. Right. And also Yuya is here now. So Yuya! Yuya! Wave hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, awesome. uh, the famous Yuya, he's the one that's helping me. Uh, sorry, what did you say? I just said, this is the famous Yuya. You're the one that's helping with the <laughs> creation of the Japanese version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you, Yuya, if you think of anything that you want to share with them, just let me know. Okay. Um, yeah, so when translating English into Japanese, I care about one thing. And the tra translation should be natural. Mm -hmm. And I try to translate material into natural Japanese. And for example, at the store, how do Japanese people talk to staff? And in English, I think people might say hi or hello in the beginning of the conversation. But in Japanese, we often say, excuse me, sumimasen. So I don't directly translate English into Japanese. Instead, I try to translate translate following the way Japanese speak. So yeah, so that's, you know, I care about when I'm translating. Love it. That's so, <laughs> there's no way I would have been able, I would have gone Google Translate and that's <laughs> translate <laughs> Spanish to Japanese. That's what, that would have been my product. And yeah, so I'm so <laughs> glad to have Missy and Yuya here, right? Yeah, thank okay. you for having me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, all right, so after you get done with that first, that first story, you come over here to the student text, and you can read the first readings. Now, you can either do it in Romaji or Hiragana. They're both there. And so you have the, the words that, that, that they were working on, and then you have a story that's similar, or that's similar to the story that they just did. And so that they can, so the goal of reading is read something you've already heard. That's our goal. Because then those same words come up in your mind and now you're processing again for literacy rather than just fluency. So we got this. And then if you want to do it in the hiragana, it is there as well to get them yeah. used to reading hiragana right from the very beginning with lots of space. Nice and big, bold, or, or nice, nice and big spacing, so it's easier to read. In the hiragana version now goes with Matthew's book, Matthew's style. But um, now that I've been looking more into CCR, I think we're gonna make um, a yojo like the uh, or joyo the um, like standard Japanese version as well. So you can use it for different levels of your students. Um, question in yeah. the room and question is why wa instead of wa why what oh yeah why ha um, instead of what so good question so another thing that i um i think just me or what but i really think that if i am going to use romaji which i try not to um i want to use it in the way that students are going to type so that that way it'll be like a tool for them. So, oh, this is the Romaji, so this is how I type it. And then that will be like a step for them into getting into being able to type. So then the next step will be able to type and um, identify the characters uh, when they're typing. But yeah, same thing. If you don't like it, you can edit those as well, right? Even these are editable, is that correct? These are, yeah. these are not edible, but they are editable. Editable, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you um, see, there's another question in the chat. Yeah. Um, so I just gonna interject. Um, do you use san, kun, or chan when you refer to someone in those slides? Um, I do once I make them a character. So like Craig is George, so I might say George san wa blah blah blah. George san, uh, nani ga hoshi desu ka? And then he can say, watashi wa Coca Cola ga hoshi desu or whatever it is. Um, but I, they're not in the slides. But if you like that, you can add it. I just thought that it would feel more like kids' storybook style if it had sun in it, like blah 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 sun. I don't know. That was just my feeling though. But yeah, if you can add it for sure, 
if um, that's your style. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Question. Awesome. Thank so you. once you get, yes. Okay. So once you get done, oops, what did I do with that? Oh, I know what I did. Okay. Uh oh, wrong language. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So once you're done with the reading, uh, in in our in this sequence, we do the interactive story one, then we do the reading. Oh, and then we do the CCR is also here um, in this. Did you want to show this now or later? You don't have to show it. it. All it is is it's the slides with just the sentence. It's with the um, most natural form of each word. So whether it's kanji, hiragana, katakana, and it's just the Japanese script. There's no romaji, no English, no furigana, um, no grammar pop-ups. It's just the sentence and then whatever the image is. And um, we can talk about how to work your way up to that in a little bit. too. Okay. And then once you're done with the student text, uh, uh, so you go to the next, you go to the next interactive story two, and those are right here. Then you have the rest of the student text. It's this is going to be broken up, by the way, I'm going to split this up. I've done it in other languages. I just hadn't done it yet with here. After student reading one, we do this, click on this link. After student reading two, click on this link. So you know which ones to go through. We're trying to make it more uh, simpler for teachers to read. And then you can do your assessment. And your assessment is right here. Here's the student copy. Here's the teacher copy with the answers. Uh, and, and you do that. Uh, and then we also threw in a culture. There's one culture version per um per lesson or, or per chapter chapter yeah and eventually i mean if we can get some of you guys to write some really simplified culture articles we'll have one culture article per lesson that's what they're really hard to write though because yeah, you're limited hard. in the vocabulary <laughs> that you have and so it takes a lot of work if we could get 18 people writing them it would be it'd make it a lot easier yeah okay and, and then and then finally have... Oh, What's ahead. that, Missy? Go ahead. I was going to say, speaking of vocab, uh, painfully so, you and I have gone through and we made sure that every single thing, if you go in order, lines up so that if there is ever any new word, like in the readings or in um, the test, there'll be a little vocab thing and there's never more than two words that might be new. Um, oh yeah, you can show them in the cup if you go to them. There's a little vocab list. The, Couple one has a lot of vocab because it's a cultural thing. Um, and some of the words you might use in your everyday teaching, they might not already know them, but um, that's something that's really nice. The whole reason that uh, we're doing this is just because I personally selfishly wanted resources. So I was like, okay, let's create them. And I wanna make sure that if you guys are using this or if I'm using it, it's step by step in setting up the students for success, obviously setting us up as teachers. Um, making the students feel really confident and comfortable, always having vocabulary that they know. So when they get to the test, they're not like getting 20 new words and yeah. So that's just one thing I wanna say. The vocab is sequence. And check and so the links like Aya it. just, <laughs> Aya just found a link error. Thank you, awesome. I'll fix it. <laughs> But this is it. That's what's cool. Yeah, you can us. email me and I can fix it for everybody that day. So that's thank you for that. All right. So that is that is the uh, oh, and then when you have the rest of the version, you just once you're done with that, you go after the assessment, you just go on to the next the next one and you go all the way through. Um, uh, Missy says that this these two chapters this is a, all level one. Like takes a whole year to do to do these twelve stories two four six eight ten twelve these twelve stories these twelve slideshows will take all year, yep, and, and then these go really slow and you go really have slow questions and build in characters and just have fun with it and really make sure that the students so get it and so understand it. It doesn't feel slow in class. It feels fun, but yeah, I'm and then and then. And then get to a TPRS training yeah. so that we can show you how to stay on a sentence for an hour yeah. and not make it feel boring, but make it really, really develop micro fluency, uh, just like we did yesterday in the in the Korean. 
Uh, we, he really did stay on that one sentence for 20 minutes. And we weren't done yet, even though I still have Nam Jai Ga, Han Myung Isoyo, right? I still have that based on what he did, but it's not, you can see it's sick and weak. It's not strong and healthy yet. Right. Okay. Any questions about that? Yes, Will. Um, and, and this is kind of also going off a question in the chat from Mikiko West. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at this yet. How far, how many of these do you have? And roughly how far do you think that would take students like equivalent either like years in, of Japanese in high school or by actual proficiency level? Is there, is there like a, a target goal if we did all of this where you think they'll kind of be? Yeah, so I'll, I'll do my, now we don't know yet with Japanese because it hasn't been tested, but Missy Missy will let us know as, she, as soon as she finds out. But in Spanish, I will think. <laughs> in Spanish after, after chapter two, kids are testing into the intermediate mid range, which is seven, is, which is the equivalent of seven years of Spanish. <laughs> And that's after chapter two. And, and now we have students into that have gone all the way through all of Spanish one and they're into Spanish two and we're gonna test them again and see where they are. There will be a Japanese two. And what do we mean by level one? That's just, levels are weird because le levels are kind of false. In, in the TPRS world, we blow up the levels because we're, our focus is on fluency and not vocabulary, massive amounts of vocabulary acquisition that, that doesn't, I mean, not acquisition, it's just memorization and regurgitation and forget. Um, so we don't do that. We focus on fluency. So when they do the oral proficiency, they're like, wow, these kids are fluent, but their vocab isn't as high. And so we need more readers, you guys. We need, we need the way to expand vocabulary Passive vocabulary is, there's no only one, one, the fastest way is through reading. And so if you guys, if every one of you will write one book, <laughs> short, <laughs> nice and short book, write one book of, of something that's interesting to you, make up a character, who cares, Pokemon, I don't care who it is, make, make up any, anything that we can do for reading, like Ma um, Matthew Sensei, Russell Sensei, he has, he has four books mm -hmm. and we're going to put those um Matthew we are now going to put them on the on the on the portal right we just we talked about it well well we talked about it um a, a couple times a while ago right I'll, I'll, I, I'll believe it when I see it okay it's going up next week I'll okay. put them up next week uh, actually I'll get you a contract first and then I'll put them up <laughs> So how many people are watching this, Greg? Where right. of us are going to email you. So where are the books? Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, that I'll just blame Russell that he hasn't. Oh, Russell okay. since he hasn't signed the contract yet or something. I'll blame somebody else. But, okay. um, <laughs> anyways, yes, we'll get those up onto our onto our readers. And but I would love some more, you guys. Please, please. Um, is there? Let me give you some specials. If you want the basic version for this, it's two ninety nine for the first year and 99 every year after that. How many, uh, is that a good price? No, okay, so what if I made it, <laughs> what if I cut it in half? Yes. If, you, if you come to a workshop, I'll cut the price in half. So come to a workshop. And if you don't come to a workshop, then, I'll take $50 off and I'll give you a call. It's called Japanese 50. You use this, the coupon codes, Japanese 50. The way you do it is you go to languages, hit Japanese one and then hit purchase basic. The promo is $39. Yeah, US, 39 US. The promo is 39 US. It's a one-time fee. You get all of chapter one, which is a semester's worth of material. So for 39, if you want to just try, I, I can't afford 299 or 249 or whatever it is, I'll go 90, I'll go $39 and I'll give it a try. There it is. Purchase the promo. If you want to say, hey, I want to help develop this, I want this to grow and stuff, purchase the basic. Normally it's 299. When we get it done, it'll be 399. 
So get it sooner while it's being built. Like it's an airplane in flight. <laughs> You're taking your chances, right? <laughs> right. So get it, get it 299 or 249 if you if you use Japanese 50. But if you come to a workshop, we have a workshop starting Monday. We have a workshop starting Monday, and we also have one next week. The workshop starting Monday is in is is in uh, it's online, and it's recorded. So if you can't make the if the time's a weird time for you, you can also watch the recordings. It's twelve. It's actually more than twelve hours because we have a question and answer afterwards. It's about sixteen hours of TPRS basic training, TPRS one hundred and one. So. Any questions? Was there a question there? Okay. Uh, quick, quick. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. S sorry. Um, so yeah. it's uh, information about the workshop posted somewhere? Yeah, it, yes. It's my slideshow. But also, if you just go to the TPRS books, um, do you want to go to that page? Really? If you go to tprsbooks.com, yeah. uh -huh. training, workshops, uh sorry where is it you click workshops under training it takes a second to come up and here it is it's going to be with blaine ray the inventor of the method but if you want a really cool teacher <laughs> you can wait till may and come with me <laughs> you want to put Sounds good. the link in the chat craig yes the i'll put the link right there yeah, so this one right here, upcoming oh, events. Yeah, you got Someone it. just Thank did. You. Okay. Thank you, Yuya. Thank you. Anyways. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, Andrew. Good. Um, there is another question in the in the chat. It uh, uh, I think it's from Anna. Let me just scroll up. Um, so it, it's um she's asking other readings. I think they're Matthew's readings or whatever. Um, are they similar to the Tadoku readings? Um, and the is the focus different, or is the focus different? Are we talking about the novels or the readings in the stories? Um, Anna, could you um, explain? Go ahead, Anna. Yep. Um, I, I make sure to unmute yourself. And if she's not here, I'll... Oh, she's I'm... here, she's here. I'm okay, here. I was going to say, I can predict what she's asking. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've unmuted myself. Sorry, I've got a snoring cocker spaniel next to me. Um, yeah. Uh, I use a lot of Tadoku, which is oh, a little yeah. bit, look at what I'm doing and then sort of the structures. So it's similar to what you do. So there are a lot of Tadoku readers out there, but they the focus is different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm. So yeah. I was just it's similar or different because uh, if people are looking for things, there are a lot of free Tadoku readers online as well. But they awesome. don't have as many structures, but it has... Like you'd have many lessons within that. And Tadoku are always looking for writers there as well. Mm. Mm. I was just. That's a great idea. Love it. That's where Sanae is right now, too. She's in a Tadoku workshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a Tadoku awesome. class in my high school. I love it so much. It's so fun. Mm. Any other questions? Uh, fifty dollars off or fifty percent off? Yep, it's fifty dollars off if you use Japanese fifty, and don't go to a workshop. If you go to a workshop, you'll get a different code that'll give you fifty percent off. We so here's why: because if you know how to use the materials, it's so much better. And so we want to incentivize you get to a workshop. And it basically, the work, it almost pays for itself. So get to a workshop and, and, uh, and then use the resources to their full potential. Great. Yeah, and as you're going, if you ever have questions for me, like, how do you teach? What do you do with this situation? Just reach out to me. You can email me. Missy's uh, the expert here. No, I'm not, but <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. So, yeah, we can collaborate. I love synergizing with everyone and finding new ways. Andrew comes to my class whenever you guys have your like COVID breaks and can't teach and can't go to school. And so he's always like, how about this? I have a question about this. Why do you do this? And it's so good because it just gets our brains flowing. It's awesome. Russell Sensei, did you have a question? 
Yeah, I just wanted to clarify about the 50% off. Is that 50% off just off the first year rate? Or is that also 50% off the monthly or the, the year first year? Just the first the year. first year rate. Yep. Say, that'd yeah. be I'd sign up now. <laughs> yeah, no 99 every year, every year after that. Basically a cost of a textbook. By the way, you have printing rights. You can print anything on there. You can edit anything on there. Just, just something to consider for the future. And I maybe 99 is the cheapest you can go and still maintain and create all this stuff, and that which is fine. But a lot of uh, Japanese teachers have smaller programs. So when we're getting funding on a per child basis or per, per student basis, um, $99 may be an entire like whole that. year stuff. Hey, I, if my, that's I the deal, it was $120. That was like what I had to spend all year. I yeah. have a really soft heart. And if you give me a good sob story, <laughs> I, I'll probably, I'll probably give in. So if that's the case, let me know and, and we'll figure something out. Now, um, Russell's son say he doesn't have to worry about this because his district is awesome. I was going to ask, this is, we're going to add it in my district. Thing. We're, we're going we're gonna to convert you guys over to this website. Okay. So can we just let other people know that that's a thing? Um, if you're trying to get like um, more teachers in your district, like Spanish, French, any language um, using TPRS, uh, T, uh, TPRS Books actually set up um, the portal for our district where all the teachers in our district have access to all the languages and everything. So it doesn't come out of our individual budgets. Our district does it. So yes. if you are district people or can talk to district people, I'd highly recommend. Yeah. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Missy, you're up. Um, okay. We are running out of time. I was going to talk about CCR a little bit because um, people were talking about that in the chat yesterday. This is going to be like a two minute <laughs> CCR. It's super short, super basic. But um, definitely check out Terry Walsh's uh, website. And then this is more specifically about cold character readings. Again, this PowerPoint will be on uh, Russell Sensei's or Matthew's um, website for you to access. And my email's in the chat. Email me if you have any questions. Um, like literally, I put it in one slide. So start with your end goal. Pick a book. Um, I recommend if you have beginners, pick a story from either volume one or volume two, uh, especially if you are using the TPRS slides from what we just saw. They work together and they support each other in the style of the writing. I try to copy um, Matthews as much as I can and his videos on YouTube are really good too. If anyone hasn't seen them, I highly recommend them. They are adorable and they're hilarious. <laughs> they're like so random and strange my students are like what just happened is did that really happen <laughs> so what's your end goal what do you want them to read so maybe you can get a story or you can even go into like his whole book depending on where your students are and then step two write out all of the words that are unknown and there are vocab lists in here so he does the work for you but you can go through highlight the words that you know your students are going to know. And then while you go through your TPRS stories and you're teaching and interacting with your students, um, just throw in those words. Know like, oh, it talks about um, a bus in here. So I'm going to ask them, how did he, George, go to Chicago? Bus today. Oh, buses. So now they have bus and they're ready to go. So put in all those words wherever you need it. Make sure the students really understand those words. Um, but don't let them know that it's because they need it for their story. You just add it in randomly and ha it's so funny. And then um, once you know your students are so ready, they can understand what you're saying. They can predict, in Japanese, it's kind of easy. It's like a natural thing. You can predict what someone's gonna say. Um, Ice cream, ga? And then they already know you're gonna say ski desk because they've only learned five verbs. And so, you know. It's going to be stiff. And then uh, once they can start predicting what you're saying, they just, they've got the language so well, then you go in and you show them your CCR videos, or maybe you give them their first story to read. And it is like magic. I just randomly tried this with my adult class and I didn't even like prep them for it. 
I just showed them. There's a video you can watch it. I don't know which one it is, but like 19 or 20. And um, I had students like my uh, lower processors, and they were just reading, and I was like, "Oh, it works!" Like to me, it feels like magic. But that's like the very basic, basic of what it is. I've been talking to Terry, and I've talked to Matthew, and we're gonna try and work out a training so that for Japanese teachers specifically, where we can use uh, Matthew's book, and Terry will kind of help us as a Japanese community um, create a better CCR system for us, because there is one that works really well for Chinese. We all know that. But we have a little bit, like some unique qualities to our language. So she said that she would help us. So I'll give you all of that information. Maybe I can give it to Matthew and then you can put it on your page or we can put it on Facebook or whatever. Sure, but sure. Um, we only have a few more minutes. So I'm gonna stop here. If anyone has any quick questions for me, I know that was way too fast, but. I fixed the link. Yeah. <laughs> it's that fast. <laughs> Just tell me and I'll do it. Perfect. And then again, all of the promo codes are also here if you forget them. But I think Japanese 50 is pretty easy to remember. Um, here are the links to the workshops and the websites as well. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your time and your questions and please email Craig or I and, or Yuya and let us know if you want help. Because <laughs> the more we have helping, the faster we can go. All right. Arigatou gozaimashita. <laughs>